Hi, I'm Peter Mansbach, and I'm president of Circadian Sleep Disorders Network. Last year, several people with circadian rhythm sleep disorders spoke here and mentioned our listserv, our online discussion group, with several hundred participants. Some of us felt we needed an organization to promote awareness and accommodation for these disorders. We've now formed such an organization, Circadian Sleep Disorders Network. We've incorporated, elected a board of directors, and received our 501c3 designation. We have a website which you can reach at csd-n.org, and you do need the hyphen, otherwise you get the Chinese Software Development Network. We opened for membership last January, and we're forming a medical advisory board with Dr. Seisler as its first member. Based on research surveys, we estimate three out of every 2,000 people suffers from delayed sleep phase syndrome, DSPS. That's over half a million Americans. In addition, we estimate another 75,000 Americans suffer from non-24 hour sleep-wake disorder. Most of these are blind people, but some are sighted. We count over 30 on our small listserv. I've heard so many stories from people on our listserv of doctors who flat out do not believe in these disorders, and even sleep specialists who insist that if only the patient did what he prescribed, he would be able to live on a normal schedule. Some people are helped by treatment, including light and melatonin, but some are not. We feel our most urgent task is to spread awareness of these disorders among the public and especially within the medical community about how disruptive these disorders can be to people's lives, how injurious to their health, and that they cannot be always be brought under control. Far too many people are being misdiagnosed with depression or ADHD when the real problem is sleep deprivation due to an underlying circadian disorder. They are often prescribed medications based on these misdiagnoses. Some have serious side effects, but they don't work since they aren't addressing the underlying sleep disorder. I keep reading emails on our listserv from people who are trying to hold down a daytime job and only getting three or four hours of sleep a night. These people are destroying their health. Some have already been diagnosed with diabetes or other chronic long-term health problems. Worse yet, they're not getting support from their physicians. They're told they are lazy. They are told they are not following the prescribed regimen strictly enough. They are told they could hold a daytime job if only they pushed themselves harder. But they are pushing themselves right into the ground. I read emails from people who have heard about a career that allows working at night only to learn that the training they need to get certified can only be taken in the morning. In other cases, employers who are desperate for people to work the night shift nevertheless require the same people to work the day shift part of the time. This needs to change. I recently visited a local sleep lab to introduce our organization, and I spoke with one of the technicians. She was aware of circadian sleep disorders, but admitted frankly that she was not concerned with them, but only with sleep apnea. If there was a different problem, she said it was up to the sleep doctor to determine that. Well, the last time I had my sleep study, the technician made me go to bed at midnight and woke me at 5 a.m. The sleep doctor then decided my problem was I wasn't getting stage 4 sleep. No, not between midnight and 5 a.m. I could have told her that. We are heartened by the emphasis this committee has placed on circadian research. We're hopeful that NIH-sponsored research and outreach will raise awareness of circadian issues and will lead to a better understanding of the treatments, including why some people are helped by the treatment, but others are not. Thank you.